Hey, I'm Joe. I'm one of the rangers here at Colt Creek, and today we are looking at the Type 7 slide-in unit. This is our Type 7 slide-in unit. First thing you want to do before you start your pump is make sure you've got gasoline in there. We're good to go. Second thing you want to check when you're running your pump is if you've got water in the tank. You can see it runs off of a 50 horsepower Honda engine and then it goes back here to our impeller head. It's only got one impeller on it, so not a lot. It about maxes out at 50 PSI or so, so it's basically we use these types of pumps to get water out of a creek or, you know, if we want to stage a portable pump to hold a line, it's a good one. Not a lot of pressure, not a lot of mojo, but you still want to treat it nice. So all centrifugal pumps, if we follow the plumbing, come in the center, come out this way. This will be important for the priming sequence because this thing likes to lose its prime. And if you don't know what I mean when I say prime, it means water is all the way through the pump head, that whole impeller saturated with water. Why is that important? because if you run this impeller dry, you will ruin my impeller. Water sucks in here, gets spun around. You know, if you've ever been on the tilt-a-whirl at the county fair, same principle, less vomit. The more important thing is it's pressurizing it, spinning it around really quickly. It needs a place to go out. So normally this is accomplished by our recirculator valve here. You probably can't hear that in the video, but I hear the water draining out of this pipe as I open it. That is the problem with this unit is the recirculator gravity drains out. And as we remember, the prime drains out of the pump down the pipe and then we lose a prime on this. Always start with the center of this impeller and kind of work your way back to figure out where the water is being drawn from. So in this case, center down. This is going to be called our tank to pump valve right here and typically we just leave it open because uh, the only time you would be closing it is in a drafting situation. The next one is as we go out from the pump this goes back to the tank so this is our pump to tank valve and that's our recirculator valve. Normal operation of this pump is going to be always open because it allows pressurized water from the impeller to escape back to the tank. As we know, the rule of thumb for these centrifugal pumps, always have water in it and always have a place for the water to go. If you can remember those two things, you probably will not break Joe's pumps. But if we follow it on the other end of this branch right here, you can kind of see where the more exciting ball valve here, this is our pump to hose valve here. If you were to open it in this position and have the pump running, the hose will spray water. This is important for the priming sequence later. I will show you why. Oh. I'm sure you all want to see the darn pump be started. So, important thing is uh, it's got an electric switch right here. So flip it up, that's off, flip it down, that is on. Make sure that's on don't start the pump without the prime. It's important that after you're done priming that you close this because A, it's on the pressure side. If you follow the hose around, it's actually getting pressure put on it from the pump. From the pressure gauge, you can see where it comes out this way. So you don't want pressure put on these hand primers, especially because they have very, fragile membrane relative to pressure. So always remember when you're done priming to close it on up. The other thing that is odd about this unit is we're gonna have to close the recirc and open up the hose valve. This is to allow the water a place to go because A, I learned this over the course of an embarrassingly long amount of time. No matter how much you pump this hand primer, 
if it comes out this end and drains in the tank via the recirc because gravity is a thing, then you will not maintain a prime in time to start this pump and it's quite annoying. So we close the pump to tank valve, aka our recirc. Open up our hose reel, make sure the nozzle is open. This gives our water a way out while we're starting it. But before we do that, when you are priming something, you actually only want the priming valve open. So the sequence goes is thus for priming. Close your recirc, close your hose handle, open up the priming valve, and what we're aiming for, I'm gonna point it to the camera for exciting purposes. The prime should be the only way the water gets out while we're using the hand pump for the maximum efficiency. And you're looking for basically, it'll be very hard to pull and it'll be pulling a solid chunk of water every time and then I would say, okay, it's primed. Next step on this is to open up our hose and double check to make sure the hose valve's open. I don't want to soak Val's bed, so I'm just going to need it over the side. After I'm sure the prime is good, primer's closed, recirc is still closed to not lose it to gravity. We'll flip it on, so do that for these engines. This is the choke on the carburetor. For most engines, it's going to be, you're going to look for the little choke symbol. In this case, it's got the arrow pointing to where it's going to be full choke position. If you got it in between, we call that a half choke. Normally when you're starting an engine cold, it needs to be choked more because it needs some fuel in the carburetor for the spark to ignite. Now, if you hear a as you are choking it, um, switch it to a half choke because if you keep yanking on the cord, trying to start it and it's full choke, you can flood the carburetor, meaning, or you flood the engine, often what people say, meaning you've got too much fuel in there relative to oxygen and you're gonna have a really fun time getting it. Other ring, the gas line, this is the off position, on position. So there's usually two little things that you have to turn on. Always make sure I close that recirc because uh, otherwise all that hard work priming the pump valves and getting water into this nice pipe over here will have gone to waste so it's just kind of a labor saving tactic is there's gonna be water in the pump or you're gonna make Joe mad by damaging the impeller and that water's got a place to go Otherwise, the pump will explode and you're gonna have a very bad day courtesy of Joe. We work with a lot of pumps, so we work with a lot of frustrating pumps and this uh, Type 7 one has been a frustration, but we've figured it out. So we're gonna learn some things about it today.